sing our hearts will cry let's sing it out all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing let's sing Great you, Lord. let's try that we got one more let's try one more time all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the breath in our lungs this morning. We thank you 
uh, for giving us your breath, for giving us your spirit. Lord, we invite the Holy Spirit to be part of our lives this morning. Come, Holy Spirit. So, Lord, we thank you for the promise of the Spirit. We thank you for the presence of the Spirit. We thank you for the presence of the mothers in our lives this morning. And, Lord, we pour out our praise to you this morning and every morning. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. I want to invite you to have a seat. Good morning. That should wake you up. <laughs> We're starting a new series called Awaken, and so we wanted something bright, right? Like the Holy Spirit in our lives. So just want to say good morning and welcome. I'm Pastor Paul, everybody that's online. We're so glad that you're with us here at St. Mark's Online. If you're a guest with us, uh, we're just happy to have you here this morning. We pray that you are blessed. And uh, I have with me... I'm Alice Murray. Uh, yeah, give her a round of applause. <laughs> happy Mother's Day, Alice. Thank you. Um, so we have some transition going on around here at St. Mark's. Many of you know that last week we celebrated... Uh, Pastor Steve taking a call down to Texas, and so um, we are just transitioning some staff and moving some pieces around. We want to just keep you informed of what's going on, and so today I want to announce that Alice is going to be taking on a new position here, uh, the Director of Care and Hospitality, and so it's a multi-purpose role. Uh, one part of it is that care ministry that uh, so many people look to and need for different transitions in life, uh, not only just when you're in medical need, obviously, but also with whatever you're going through in life. And then there's also hospitality. And part of that is not only just Sunday morning's hospitality, but we are looking to continue to open up our facility here to our community. We, we really want everybody to, to know that St. Mark's is a place that, where they are welcome. And so uh, Alice is gonna head up that, that effort as well. You wanna speak to some of that? Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, are you done? Because then I can talk? <laughs> okay, all right. This is how it goes. He says, I'm going to come up gonna and you're going to talk. And then I stand here and just shot. like, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I am super excited about taking uh, this new position. I am also uh, very, uh, it's bittersweet because I love family ministry and there's no way they're kicking me out of that completely. You're still going to see me on Wednesdays and Sundays uh, with the youth. But I have a real passion for coming alongside people and listening to their stories. Um, my hope is that I can be with all of you in times of celebration and also in times of maybe trauma or uh, support you need that I can just walk alongside you and your families and your marriages and your business life, whatever you need, that I can just come alongside and uh, speak Jesus to you and be there to walk alongside. And also we are blessed by this amazing building and we're really starting to have more people come during the week. And I just think we need to be a church community that's here to welcome them and to also for them to see Jesus during the week when we're here. So I'm going to be looking for ways to connect with the community um, and welcome them in. So awesome. Awesome. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. And if you've ever gotten to know Alice at all, you know that like care oozes from her. Right? You can, you can wipe it off of her. It oozes so much. That's way gross, Paul. Could we yeah, think of yeah. another way of... And, and so, uh, I think we should, we know, should have practiced that more. Yeah, that's, I like that analogy. Um, I don't. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> but um, we're, it just, she's just got the gift of, of care, uh, truly. And I could tell you many stories, but uh, we're excited as a staff to have her move in this position. Now, with that said, I want you to know that we are not abandoning... Uh, family ministry. In fact, tomorrow we start a process for hiring a high school full-time minister here. And so we're excited for that. We really feel like that's a big need for us, and we want to continue to expand our family ministry. Um, but uh, so you know, we're going to be hiring a full-time high school minister, and Alice is going to be transitioning. And that is a loaded word, transition. So we've got some time here. We've got a summer well, we're going to start that call process for a high school person, and uh, but so you'll see Allison wearing multiple hats. So yes, I will. And there's another announcement we have because yeah, today's a special day. It is. A it's special Mother's day. day, and I just want to invite all <laughs> ladies as you leave today. There's a table out there with some flowers. So take a flower and remember that you are a loved daughter of God. All right. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Alice.
All right, all right. Well, let me start by saying Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, hallelujah. Now what? Seriously, like now what? What do we do now? Uh, by the way, as, as a pastor and I think as church workers, we go through this cycle every year, right? So we, we just had four amazing Sundays here, going all the way back to Palm Sunday. Uh, we, we, are, we are seeing at St. Mark's uh, people coming back in, in, in person and people joining us online. We are starting to have the same numbers of people in worship, not that this is everything, but the same numbers in worship that we had before the pandemic. There are not a lot of churches that can say that. And so we're really excited about that. So the last four weeks, yeah, the last four weeks, um, you, you've, just, you've just felt it, you've seen it. Easter was awesome, then after that we had our celebration for our capital campaign kickoff, which continues to go uh, super well. We continue to have more and more commitments coming in. God's just opened up lots of doors. And the last Sunday we had Pastor Steve's farewell and send off, and that was exciting as well. Um, it's, just, it's just an exciting time, but you kind of get to this point as a church worker and you're like, okay, what do we do now? Because in a month, a third of you will be on vacation. <laughs> right? Summertime uh, will kick off. And uh, I feel like that's how the disciples were after Easter. Uh, we're starting the series called Awaken, and Jesus has to come back into their lives and wake them up after his resurrection. You would think, like, you would think that, that the, the women coming back from the tomb telling the disciples, hey, he's risen from the dead, would have woken them up. But no, no, no. Jesus has to go to extra length for men, right? And so he's got to come and he's got to show himself to them and wake them up. And, and Jesus does this in two ways, primarily in the Gospels. The first way is literally he shows them himself. He's like, look at my hands, look at my side, put your hand right there, feel it. I really am flesh and blood. And the other way he does that is by giving them the Holy Spirit. And I, I want to just share some different scripture passages with you today. We're going to take from John, we're going to take from Matthew, we're going to take from Luke. But the first passage I want to share with you is what happens after Easter, and it's from John 20, and Jesus comes to his disciples, and it says this, again, Jesus said, peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you, and with that he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Now, this is, whole, this is like, he doesn't have a mint in his mouth breathing on them, okay, because he has resurrection breath, okay, that's what I'm talking about. It's clean, it's pure, it's awesome, and it's powerful, right? It's powerful. And so he breathes on them. Now, what's really important in this text is this word receive. If you open up your Bible, I would almost guarantee you that that's what your Bible has in it, receive. Almost every translation translates this word in the Greek as receive. Now, this word in the Greek is what we call an imperative, and it's plural. So don't, don't lose me here. But imperative plural means, imperative means go, go, go. Do, do, do. It's, 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 you know, like when, okay, here's an example. When moms say, clean up your room, that's an imperative, okay? Does that make sense, kids? It's an, yes, yes. <laughs> it's an imperative, right? And so Jesus says, you need to receive, y'all, y'all need to receive the Holy Spirit. But here's the issue. It still is optional for the disciples, because imperatives are optional, right? We know this as, as moms understand this, right? When you tell your kids, go clean up your room, what happens? They don't clean it, right? Not necessarily, unless you're like amazing as, when it comes to getting your kids to do things. And so, I don't want to go as far as to say that Jesus is begging them to receive the Holy Spirit, but when he says receive the Holy Spirit, it's optional. It really is, it's optional. And by the way, you know this because at the end of Matthew, when Jesus ascends into heaven, literally he launches to space, right? It says in there in Matthew that some of his disciples doubted. I mean, how can you do that as a disciple when you're watching a man come off the ground, go into the sky, and some of them are like, no, that's not real. I don't believe that. Well, this is, this is why. Because receiving the Holy Spirit actually is optional, which leads us to what I want to talk about today. In my opinion, 
the faith life is founded on a posture of receiving the Holy Spirit. I think we are called as Christians to receive the Holy Spirit. And this whole series that we're going to be going through from today until Pentecost is about the Holy Spirit. And today I want to talk about having that posture of receiving the Holy Spirit. As Christians, we don't grab or take the Holy Spirit. We don't claim it. We don't name it. We don't put our you know, stake in the sand and say, hey, you know, I'm going to take the Holy Spirit. Now we receive the Holy Spirit. And so we need to constantly be in this posture of reception. Let me ask you a question. How many of you have good posture? Ugh. How many of you have bad posture? Yeah, yeah, right? So if you're a chiropractor out there, you see all your possible clients right here, okay? <laughs> okay. I, how many of you had a mom when you were a kid say to you, stand up straight, put your shoulders back, head up? Anybody? I spent this last week with my mom, um, and we did a cooking show. You can see it on the past call update. We made bread pudding and forced the staff to eat it. And so um, we, I, my mom always is, a, when I was a kid, I mean, I grew really fast. Whenever I was a kid, she always said, put your, put your shoulders back and your head up. And I, you know, I kind of thought, well, that's whatever. I can do whatever I want to as a kid. But now that I'm 45, the aches and pains have kicked in a little bit, and I know how important posture is. So go ahead, take a minute right now, put your shoulders back. Take a deep breath in. I've learned to shoulders back and down, tuck your chin in. Oh yeah, that's like, you know, good, good posture. Take a deep breath in, everybody. Okay, now you can go back to slouching. All right. <laughs> you know, there's this type of good posture and a bad posture when it comes to the faith life. Good posture is a posture of reception. Bad posture is a posture of slouching. And the disciples, I think you find them in the New Testament slouching after Easter. I think they, they say, Christ is risen, he's risen indeed, hallelujah. And then they go, now what? Right? And I think Jesus talks about a good posture in his Sermon on the Mount. So I want to uh, bring you to Matthew here a little bit and weave this together. Uh, I think he, he talks about good posture when he talks about asking, seeking, and knocking. You've probably maybe even heard this verse before. Everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. The one who knocks, the door will be open to him. This passage is about the posture of reception because Jesus outlines it with these three words. By the way, when you were a kid, what happened if you went to the cookie jar and took a cookie without permission? That's bad, right? That's bad posture. But if you went to your mom and you said, Mom, may I have, by the way, it's may I, not can I have a cookie. You can always have a cookie, but it's about may. Everybody get what I'm saying there? Like this is, if this is bringing traumatic experiences of your childhood up, it's okay. We're going to make it through it. May I have a cookie? I would say about 65% of the time, mom would say sure, right? Because moms are awesome like that. Asking is about a posture of reception. God, may I have your spirit? Would you please give it to me? Seeking is a, is a posture of, of discovery, right? It's discovery. When you, when you seek out the Holy Spirit, you discover what the Holy Spirit's doing in your life. And knocking on the door is an invitation for the Holy Spirit to open it in your life. By the way, the only people who don't knock on your door are the FBI, okay? And so everybody's got either one way to knock on a door or ring a doorbell, or they've got a little camera there these days, right? You know, there's always this opportunity to receive. And notice, just notice how Jesus doesn't say, as Christians, you're supposed to just go out there and, and, and push over all the doors and you're supposed to go out there and run everything down, and you're supposed to go out there and make this huge difference in the world. No, he says, ask. Ask, my children. Seek. And knock on the door. It's going to be open to you. This passage has been abused for so I just can't even tell you how many times I've heard it, because we, we take this passage and we say, see if we just do what we're supposed to do. It's just going to happen. No, this pastor is all about reception. It's all about reception. And so practically good posture 
looks something like this, getting on your knees, opening your heart, and surrendering control. When you get on your knees, you get into a posture of reception. You, you remember the, the, the churches that had the kneelers in them? Does anybody, everybody, anybody ever been to a church with a kneeler? Yeah. Uh, it, what's, what's interesting is, and I'm going to come down here, just follow me over here, but <laughs> when I was a kid, I used to think that kneelers were for bad people, okay? <laughs> so, hi, good morning, how you doing? You okay? All right, so... I used to think that, you know, get out the kneelers, because when did you use the kneelers in, in those churches? Only when you did what? Confessed your sins, right? So I used to think that, you know, kneeling was this, was this posture of subjugation, right? Like, I'm a terrible, poor sinner, and this is really bad, and so I'm kneeling because, you know, lest the Lord strike me down, right? But what I've come to learn, and we see it here on Sunday mornings when we receive communion, and um, is when people come up here and kneel, it always seems to be a posture of reception. And if you ever come to a service and you kneel, what do you usually do when you receive communion? You stick your hand out like this, and they give you the wafer, right? And you dip it in the wine or you drink the wine, whatever it is. You see, kneeling is a posture of reception. And that's why we kneel in prayer. So if you ever go to a church that has kneelers in it and you take out the kneelers and all the clanking happens, you know, in that moment, and you kneel, just remind yourself in that moment that this is a posture of reception before the Lord. Because anybody who asks, they will receive. Anybody who seeks is going to find. Anybody who knocks, the door will be open to them. And so I think we, we start in that posture of reception by getting on our knees in prayer. I think we... We uh, seek by opening up our hearts. And then, you know, when you, when you knock on a door, you're waiting for somebody to open it for you. You don't have any control of that situation, and so you, you, you let go of that control. You surrender it. Ask, seek, and knock. They're all acts of reception, and we, we do that as we receive the Holy Spirit. Speaking about knocking, you all remember, like, uh, a few months ago, I shared some knock-knock jokes with you? Yeah, they were knock-knock jokes that incorporate my, my youngest son's name, Toby, into them. And y'all laughed uproariously with my knock-knock jokes back then. I've created a new one, okay? You ready for this? Knock-knock. Swiss chocolate salesman. Would you like to buy some Toby Lerone? Okay, he likes it, and that's the point, my friends. Um, yeah. Actually, I stick these things in there just because I want to see how many of you are awake. All right. Toby Lerone, you get it? Anybody hungry for Toby Lerone? No. Here's what bad posture looks like. Bad posture looks like I get everything I want, I know it all, and I'm in control. That's bad posture. That's slouched posture. I don't ask anymore, I just take. Right? I, I don't... I don't need to seek anymore because I've got it all figured out in life. I'm not open to any doors because I'm the one that's in control. I open my own doors. And by the way, there's a, there's a, there's a part of Christianity that's kind of like that today in America, right? Christianity is all about opening your own doors. It's, it's all about you figuring it out and you making your own way and getting what you want. But that's not what I see in Jesus. Jesus doesn't say that. He says you've got to be in a posture of reception as a follower of Christ. He says if you want to follow me, you've got to take up your cross. He doesn't say you're going to get everything you want or you're going to figure it all out and you're totally in control. No, he says instead receive the Holy Spirit. It's an imperative. Now, I want to acknowledge that the Spirit moves where it wills, Right? Jesus starts off talking about the Spirit in the Gospel of John, and he says it's like the wind. We can't direct the Spirit any more than we can direct the wind. Amen? Amen. We can't do that. But we can be open to the movement of the wind. We can be open to the movement of the Spirit. And when I look at Jesus, I see him constantly opening himself to the Father and to the Spirit in prayer. Because good posture mimics Jesus' posture in prayer. I think 
prayer changed Jesus in the same way that it changes us. Uh, in Luke 6, verse 12, it says, one of, these day, one of those days Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. How many of you have ever spent the night praying? None of you? You know why? Because you're tired. You're asleep. Because going through the whole night, it's dark, and your body in its circadian rhythm, whatever, you know what I'm talking about, it says, sleep, don't stay up awake. What kept Jesus awake? It was the Holy Spirit. It was the Father enlivening him. I bet you he was more awake that night than when he was walking with his dull disciples, right? I bet you he was more awake at night talking to the Father, receiving the Holy Spirit in his life than his disciples were on the night that he was betrayed. Well, they were definitely asleep in the garden. Good posture mimics Jesus' posture in prayer because in prayer we're changed, and I think that Jesus is changed in prayer. That's why you read in your Bible so often Jesus goes to the Father in prayer over and over and over and over again because that's where he's changed. That's where he's woken up. Because you can go through this life and you can be lulled to sleep, can't you? We live in a society that needs the Holy Spirit more than ever. More than ever. We need it in our families. We need it in our churches. We need it in our government. We need it in our schools. We need the Holy Spirit more than ever to wake us up. And so Jesus spends the night getting woken up, being changed. Because I think ultimately Jesus was there going, Abba, Father, I need you to help me out. I need to be changed. I can't make this. I can't do this alone. One of my favorite authors, Richard Foster, um, he wrote in his book on, uh, called The Celebration of Discipline, he wrote, in prayer, real prayer, we begin to think God's thoughts after him, to desire the things he desires, to love the things he loves, to will the things he wills. Now, do you think that way about prayer? I know that a lot of times my prayer can be pretty much, uh, God, could I have this? Could I have that? Could you do this for me? Could you bless that? And thank you, uh, you know, for my daddy and mommy. You know, the types of things with, that I say with, with my kids, which is not a bad thing. But how often do you go to prayer and you say, okay, God, I'm, I'm coming to you in prayer because I want to desire the things you desire, to love the things you love. I want my will to follow your will. You see, because that's a posture of reception. That's what prayer is all about. To help you understand this, I'm going to put up an analogy here that you will fully understand if you are a resident of the great state of Iowa. If you're online and you're not from Iowa, you might not fully understand this, but you'll get it if you're from Iowa. What's this? That is corn. And those are windmills, right? And we see them all over Iowa. You're driving down the highway, and you know exactly what they're supposed to do, right? They harness the energy of the wind. The wind has the energy, not the windmills, right? The windmills are there, the turbines are there to collect that kinetic energy from the wind and power our homes and things like that. And you know what the most frustrating thing is as an Iowan? Is when you drive down those roads, going into a headwind of 20 miles per hour, and one of those darn things is not moving. Can I get an amen? I mean, I'm like, I, what is wrong with this thing? It's not faced the right direction. It's not moving at all. And I'm trying to drive through a 20-mile-per-hour headwind, which is a little bit like our lives as Christians, right? Remember I told you it's optional? It's the same thing with windmills. If you're not faced into the wind, those things don't work. If they're not turned towards the wind, the wind's not going to change them. It's not going to rotate them. If they're stubborn and they're stuck and they're not going to move and they say, forget you, wind, it's not going to move them. It's the same way in our lives. We, we need to face the wind and have a posture of reception to the Spirit. Jesus says, Spirit's like the wind. It blows where it wants to. So I need to follow the Spirit like a windmill follows the wind. A good windmill 
receives all of that energy. The Spirit is like energy as well. The Old Testament describes it, the Hebrew word is ruach, which is like energy, it's like life, it's like power. And so as Christians, when we turn in and face the wind, face the Spirit, in a posture of reception, you start to see the change happening. And that power and that energy starts to flow in your life because you're open to it. If you get that, I want to, if you understand that, I want to close with what Jesus says right after, ask, seek, and knock, because I think this passage is just as important as the passage that we're so familiar with. He says this, if then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give, give good gifts to those who ask him? He says this right after, ask, seek, and knock. Now, it's Mother's Day today, and so I want to change this up a little bit. I'm not making a claim about God being a mother or anything like that. I just want to be honest. Our mothers give us the best gifts, don't they? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I can almost say without a doubt that my dad probably had nothing to do with my birthday gifts or Christmas gifts or things like that. It was my mom. And I know for certain that my dad never baked a cake for me on my birthday. But who did? Mom. Mom, right? Mom did. Think about how much your mom has loved you. What your mom has done for you. Picking out your clothing in the morning to go to school. Buying shoes after you've worn your shoes out. Think about your mom, how much she has prayed for you and cared for you, and, and, and just bringing you into the world that choice of love, right? To give you life. I was thinking about the song before that we just sang, it's your breath in my lungs. I, you know, I, I know this is strange, but I, I started thinking about how when you're in your mother's womb, it's her breath that keeps you alive, right? That's how much your mom has done for you, and listen to what Jesus says. If you know how to good, give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him, to those who have their hands out like this and say, Lord, I'm looking for your good gift in my life. Now, I want you to juxtapose that statement of Jesus with the cross. Because whenever I read these words, I wonder if Jesus was thinking about his future when he said them. Because you see, there's a moment in Jesus' life when the Father does not give him a good gift. Even though he's open in reception, it's the night that he's betrayed and he's in the garden and he's saying, Father, if you could take this cup from me, that would be awesome. But not my will, but yours be done. And the Father stays silent. And then on the cross, he cries out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And God stays quiet. Why? The reason is this. The Father wanted more sons and daughters than we could ever imagine. The Father wants every single person who has ever lived to know how deep and how high and how wide his love is for them. And so the Father rejects his Son so that we can be accepted as sons and daughters. I'm going to tell you right now, there's not a mom out there who wouldn't take a train for their child. And the Father gave his Son so that you could be his child. You are a son or daughter of God. And God wants to give you good gifts. The Father wants to pour out the Holy Spirit in your life. So let me ask this, what's going on in your life right now that you need the Holy Spirit? What, what temptation are you facing that you need the Holy Spirit to help you overcome it? What issue is going on in your life that you need the wind to blow in your life once again? What relationship needs healing today that the Holy Spirit can heal 
Where do you need a breath of fresh air? Or ultimately, how's your faith life going, right? Where a few Sundays after Easter, Jesus rose from the dead because the Father did not abandon him. The Father said, I love my children more than you could ever imagine. And so he gives his son, but he says, it's not over on Good Friday. Three days later, his son comes back to life and power and glory and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And so how's your faith life going? Are you slunched over like the disciples in their pontoon boats on the Sea of Galilee, not catching any fish? Do you need Jesus to come in and wake you up? Or is your posture one of reception where you're standing and you're saying, I'm here, Holy Spirit, come do what you will. I want to just teach you something this morning, and uh, it's not too radical, but I, I just want to invite you to stand up, and we're going to close in song here, but I want you to make this song a prayer. You know, whenever you pray, again, I, I think I've said this before, we teach our kids to fold their hands, that's just because they like to touch other people, okay? <laughs> All right? Otherwise, if you ask me, prayer really what we should do with our hands and prayers, we should have them open, right? Because prayer is about God changing us. So I just want to invite you to open up your hands like this. And I'm going to pray a prayer. You don't need to listen to me, okay? Maybe there's something else you need to pray about, so you can feel free to pray that prayer. I'm also going to pray for the ladies out there who have not been able to have children, because I know how difficult that is, and, and just... Um, when you read scripture, you see God's heart for women who can't bear children. And I'm also going to pray for women who have had miscarriages or have lost a child. God loves you very much. And so I'm going to lift you up in prayer today. But whatever you need to pray about, you do that. And let's just keep our hands open like this. Let's pray. God, you love us so much that you gave us your son. And you offer to each one of us good gifts, the gift of your spirit moving in our lives. And so we come before you, and instead of kneeling, Lord, to receive, we're just going to put out our hands to you and receive your spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, come into the life of every person here, every person watching online. Move in us. And God, today, I want to thank you for all of our moms move powerfully in their lives to the moms out there who are tired. Give them strength. To the moms who are out there who are frustrated, God, give them wisdom. Thank you for using our moms to bless us. And Lord, I pray for all the women who haven't been able to have children or have lost a child. I pray that you'd comfort them, God. We live in such a broken world, God, it's hard to see you sometimes but I pray that you open up our eyes today, especially to anyone who's lost a child. God, help us to see your compassion, your love. And so this morning, God, we receive you. We receive your spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, come. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Why don't you just sing this with me? Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. 
your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence lord sing holy spirit holy spirit you are welcome Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. That could ever come close No thing can compare Your olive Your presence is Lord Taste and see I've tasted and seen All the sweetest of love where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord sing Holy Spirit Holy Spirit you are welcome come presence of the Holy Spirit this week as you connect your faith and life. Thanks for joining us.